Warning, this video is about violence. And so, it contains violence, and scenes of violence, and descriptions of violence. So if you don't like that, uh, maybe turn it off. Hi, welcome back to the Tony Del Degan YouTube channel where today we're going to talk about violence. <laughs> violence is an interesting concept for me specifically because I write a lot of it. In the Plight of Steel books, there's a lot of violence. It's a medieval fantasy series, so a lot of people get their heads cut off, shot with arrows, stabbed, things of that nature. How do I go about doing that? And how do you write violence in an effective way that garners a reaction from the reader? So this video specifically is going to be separated into a couple sections. There's examples from various books that I've found that kind of illustrate the point I'm trying to make. Then there's a sample that I've written of a way to describe violence that's okay for like a middle school age, you know, kind of preteen book, and then a description that would fit a Plight of Steel, kind of Game of Thrones type level of violence. And thirdly, I'm going to give you some tips on how to make sure your violence is effective, not overdone, and hard hitting for the people reading it so that you get that visceral reaction from reading something like this. Uh, some of these excerpts, I guess, are from books that have been adapted into film and TV. So firstly, we're going to look at the excerpt from the book, and then I'm going to play the clip from the movie or TV show that it was adapted into to see how they interpreted it. First of all is a lovely little book called American Psycho. I have not read this book. Uh, I know that it was turned into a movie starring Christian Bale, of course, famous movie. You like Huey Lewis on the news? Yeah, they're okay. From what I've read about the book itself, it is absolutely horrible, kind of just grotesque violence throughout the whole thing, just very disturbing stuff. So I tried to pick something that wasn't really bad. It's not just about the flavors of conformity and the importance of trends. It's also a personal statement about the band itself. Hey, Paul! Ah! But it was kind of bad enough that you can tell the style of, of the violence in the book. The axe hits him mid-sentence, straight in the face, its thick blade chopping sideways into his open mouth, shutting him up. Blood sprays out in twin brownish geysers, staining my raincoat. This is accompanied by a horrible, momentary hissing noise, actually coming from the wounds in Paul's skull, places where bone and flesh no longer connect. And this is followed by a rude farting noise caused by a section of his brain, where due to pressure, forces itself out, pink and glistening through the wounds in his face. So this is pretty horrible. But why is it horrible? Why do you get the reaction of, oh, that's absolutely disgusting? From my perspective, what does it is the way that he describes the noises. So the way that he describes the hissing, and then you think, what's the hissing from? That's disgusting. And then he tells you what the hissing is from. It's from the places where the bone and flesh no longer connect. Is that what would happen if you hit someone in the head with an axe? I don't know, but as a description in a book, it's effective because it's it's horrible, it's disgusting. Uh, followed by a rude farting noise. The word farting is is typically a juvenile word. So when you pair that with something, the imagery of, of brain coming out of somebody's head, you're adding a juvenile word to a horrible kind of scene. And so it's doubly impactful, at least for me, because you wouldn't typically use that word to describe brain coming out of somebody's skull. Next, of course, is everybody's favorite, Game of Thrones, which is very violent, but not as violent as, 
as some things I've seen, but the reason why it's impactful in Game of Thrones is because he uses violence intelligently in certain places that give impact. Bending, Ned pulled back the cloak, dreading the words he would have to find for Arya. But it was not Nymeria after all. It was the butcher's boy, Micah, his body covered in dried blood. He had been cut almost in half from shoulder to waist by some terrible blow struck from above. So in total, not as horrible as the previous description. The butcher's boy. You rode him down. He ran. Not very fast. This one is kind of tamed down, I assume, on purpose. It's, it's describing the, a child being basically cut in almost in half. And so when you describe something like that, the situation itself is horrible enough that you don't need to go into a lot of detail. Next, of course, is from A Storm of Swords, also by George R. R. Martin. This is an excerpt from The Red Wedding. She tugged hard on Aegon's hair and sawed at his neck until the blade grated on bone. Blood ran hot over her fingers. This one is particularly disgusting because there are certain points on a human body where certain people will give a bigger reaction if those parts are are violated in a violent way. So a throat is very much one of those places. Um, there's a lot of stuff in a throat that can make people squeamish when you either shoot it or stab it or cut it. In this specific uh, excerpt, she's sawing it. And the reason why it's horrible is because, again, it's... A vital part of your body like I don't have a big stomach for violence when I read something like that I get very squeamish about it because it's done so well it's written so effectively the word choice he could have said she sliced through his neck which would have been disgusting in and of itself but he said she sawed through his neck so that implies like a uh, back and forth motion, which is just abs it, in your head when you inevitably generate that picture, it's horrible, gruesome violence. Now, we should also take a look at some of my stuff since this is my video and I'm professing to know a lot about violence. And so I should show you some of my own violence from The Point of Chaos, which I'm currently writing, uh, which is the sequel to The Plight of Steel. An arrow shot across the plain, whistling like a bird. It struck soft flesh, then cracked bone, and the figure went down, disappearing behind a bluff. So this is a scene in, I don't remember what chapter it was, where uh, one of Virian Venderos's knights, his captain, uh, shoots a peasant boy that's been kind of following them along the road. This kind of harkens back to what I said about the child before from Game of Thrones where it's a child and so that in and of itself is disturbing and you don't it's not revealed that it's a child until a couple paragraphs later but because it's a child you don't need to describe as much because then it's just like disturbing on top of disturbing. Violence is done or should be done for a purpose so there should be a reason why you're writing the style of violence that you're writing. So if I, as a writer, want to put a scene where a child is shot in the head with an arrow, first of all, to make that decision carries a lot of weight because it's a not controversial thing to write, but it's, it's visceral and it's violent, and it certainly which is the reason why I did it, it certainly gives an idea of the character who is shooting the child. It also gives you a viewpoint onto the world that this is taking place in and the morals of the people living in this world. There has to be a reason for it and it has to be 
a very specific reason that you know will get a good reaction and give a good measure on the characters and the world that you're trying to create. Once she might have been haunted by the memory of the boy's throat collapsing beneath a steel arrowhead. Now, however, she saw nothing. So this is a scene where Kassara Venderos um, has just been saved by a character who I won't mention because you have to read the book. In order to save her, the guy has shot her attacker in the throat with a crossbow bolt. There should be an impactful reason as to why this guy is shooting this character in this way in the place that he's shooting him. So he could have shot him in the chest, in the heart, in the head, anywhere. But there has to be a reason for the throat. And in this specific scene, there's a metaphorical reason why he shot him in the throat. In the events leading up to this, this guy was talking a lot. He was pestering him. He was, you know, he was he was pissing this guy off by saying the things that he was saying. So alongside some other metaphorical reasons, that's one of the reasons why he shoots him in the throat because it's a it's a silencing of his voice it is entirely dependent on what the writer wants to do and so if the writer wants a very visceral scene where the violence makes the reader cringe and and be and feel disgusted then there's certain things that you have to do certain word choices intelligent word choices that will garner a reaction like that Let's take a look at an example of, of two ways that you can write something. Their swords met one last time, then broke off, allowing Bob to stab his enemy. He pulled the sword free, and the body fell to the dirt. Typical kind of, like if I was in middle school reading a, a fantasy book, that's probably something I would see in there. It could also be from, from an older, mature book, as long as that specific scene was written in that way because they the author didn't want too much violence in that point overall though if you're going for like hard-hitting gross violence it's not going to carry that much for most people so let's take a look at something that might make me kind of tip over the edge to wow that's disgusting their swords met one last time then broke off allowing Bob to bury the steel tip of his weapon into the fleshy gut of his foe. Metal cleaved through leather, then skin and muscle, until the friction grew too intense to push any further. A great yank freed the blade, and the corpse collapsed to the dirt in a cloud of dust. So what am I doing in that uh, description? In the first one, I write the sword, the sword's meat, one last time and then break off. That's the same. Instead of just saying Bob stabs his enemy, which is kind of a vague, you know, you can picture anything really, I go into detail about how it's stabbing him. So he's burying the steel tip of his weapon into the fleshy gut of his foe. So I'm describing the sword as having a steel tip. I could even go so far as to describe it more like a like a needle or a spearhead or something like that because people generally don't like you know needles and and things like that being stabbed into them fleshy gut signifies the needle is piercing into organic matter I guess you could say uh, metal cleaved through leather then skin and muscle so that sequence there is it's piercing his clothing like his tunic and then it's going further into his skin then it breaks through his skin into his muscle and that is a kind of a visceral progression deeper and deeper into his body uh, and then until the friction grew too intense to push any further so in your head you picture he's pushing it in and then it's it's being suctioned in by the the flesh and it's getting harder to push it through and then he a great yank frees the blade and the corpse collapses to the dirt in a cloud of dust so a great yank he pulls it out as if it's if it's stuck in there and he pulls it out 
and then the corpse collapses to the dirt in a cloud of dust. So the corpse, instead of just saying that it falls to the dirt, which is, it's fallen, now it collapses to the dirt and there's a dust cloud. So there's more, not visual interest, but there's more interest when it hits the ground and it creates more of a, like an impact. Violence must be impactful and you have to do it for a reason. Unless you're Quentin Tarantino, you can't, well, I shouldn't say you can't, you can do whatever you want. Violence, in most people's stories, there has to be a reason, or else people get numb to it, and then it's not impactful anymore. And so, if I, there's certain points in The Plight of Steel, for example, where if there's a fight scene where three like uh, criminals have to get shot or stabbed or whatever. The first two or the first one and then the third one or something, they die less descriptively. So he gets shot and then falls over like a plank and then dies. And then one of them, one or two of them, get a more descriptive death. And so what that does is it's not overloading the reader with oh, this guy got his arm cut off and then blah, 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 and and this thing happened to him and it's just violence and, and gore just embedded into your head for, you know, a couple paragraphs long, which is not actually a good thing. You don't want to do that. The method should make sense. Uh, I talked about this a little bit, but if you're going to kill someone, you don't have to do this, but try and make it metaphorically significant like there's a man and a woman and the man loves the woman but she doesn't love him and she has to kill him for whatever reason um maybe she shoots or stabs him in the heart and he dies that way so it's a a a literal broken heart that he dies from hold back when necessary this is very very important Because if you don't hold back and you just spew violence everywhere, people will either become numb to it and it's not impactful anymore, or they'll just put your book down and read something else because it's too much. If you want visceral violence, you have to choose smart words that get a reaction. Personally, what I've found is describing things with food words and by food words, I mean like like in that excerpt from Game of Thrones, sawing, so like a knife cutting through a steak or something. Because when you think sawing, you either think of cutting through wood or like cutting through a steak or something. And that paired with a throat is just horrible. That's another reason, because there's certain areas of the body that human beings subconsciously want to protect. So the throat, the eyes... Um, the ears, uh, generally the face kind of in total, those are areas that the human body or your brain kind of subconsciously wants to keep safe because they're important. That's why you blink when something comes near your eye because your brain is overriding and saying, close your eye, you need to protect your eye. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, It was a little bit gross and dark. (laughs) You know, naturally talking about violence and showing violence, it's going to get gross and dark. I hope you learned something. Uh, I hope you took away something. You know, if you're writing a violent scene somewhere or you read a violent scene somewhere, pay attention to the things that I talked about and see if you can pick them out. If you have other things that I missed, please go ahead and comment and I will have a look at that. And since we talked about it, go have a look at my book, The Plight of Steel, which is for sale on Amazon. Uh, The second one is being written right now. Um, And you can follow that on my social media as well as my website. And you can see how I write violence in my own book. 